United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Uh, roll call, please. September 6th. Any additions or corrections? Yeah, yeah. We have a motion to approve. Motion by the net. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Old business, a uh, discussion of the freight policy update. Um, who's going to handle that? Okay. Well, I, we can kind of explain what's going on. It went to the board, right. the uh, committee selection. Go ahead. I was just going to talk about the funding. Why don't you go ahead and talk about that? Oh, okay. Well, at the county board last month, we passed a resolution uh, giving me the authority to start negotiations with Sini and Smith. They were the selected uh, consultant for the freight study. So we're moving forward on that. Uh, in fact, I was emails back and forth with Kent James and Ann Schneider yesterday. We should have the contract pretty much completed. Uh, so I should be able to move that forward to uh, the executive committee, Mr. Houston, uh, for approval. Uh, to put it on the uh, uh, committee uh, for next week for them to the board. So we should be able to move forward on this. So, um, per the direction of the committee, we've discussed other funding options too. Um, so, the county executive had sent a letter to Secretary Blankenhorn at IDOT, which we did get an almost an immediate response. And Ann Schneider and Kent James had prepared <coughs> a, kind of a scoping document overview for them. So, we've sent that to them and they're reviewing that. So, we're optimistic that there may be some funding from IDOT. We also sent a letter to CMAP, uh, their executive director, Joe Zabo. And we did speak to him in person. We were at a, a meeting with him. And so um, we have a meeting that Bruce and I and Ann and, and Kent are going to go down to Chicago and meet with staff from CMAP. So we're hoping there may be some funding there. So we're, we're at least exploring all options of additional funding for this project. Um, and I've shared those with a, those letters with uh, Bruce Freefield and, and Chairman Gould. So if we want to share that with the rest of the committee, we can. We have those available. But, we are pursuing IDOT and CMAP funding if, if there is any available for this project. So, Senate Dryback, is there any comment concerning that? <coughs> Will the House uh, pass the transportation bill? Any, any oh, you just with the, with the long term bill? No, the only thing that we are utilizing. We're going forward with the freight study to try to utilize some of this fast lane money that will be coming up with the transportation. Now. That is really the, the impetus of us going forward with this freight study. Because with the long-term transportation plan, a lot of it has to do with freight. So we're going to try to take advantage of this money that's out there uh, by, uh, by conducting this freight study. And uh, it'll work out pretty good because the timing with that, our 2040 plan, are going to be pretty much approved at the same time. So it'll work out good as far as funding opportunities that we should be able to move forward on. Okay, any other comments? Yeah. You know, Bruce, you might want to mention part of the contract, both with NSNM and Smith, is that they help prepare uh, applications uh, for funding from the, from the uh, so that, that's part of what they're doing. Uh, yeah, that is correct. Uh, two months ago, we passed a resolution with the board that uh, uh, Ann Schneider, Ken James, uh, we had a contractual services contract with them to have oversight on this uh, freight study, and they will be uh, working with us to uh, uh, help out with the applications so that we can, we can uh, take advantage of this money. Okay. Nick, one, just one other thing that Bruce may want to comment on this because he may know more on this, but the, um, 
we were shooting from the beginning of this process for a spring application, but we've heard rumors that there may be something released sooner than that, like this fall still. I don't know, Bruce, if you know any more on that, but I know Smith Dawson had told us that, and I think Ann Schneider had also mentioned that there's rumors that the feds may release some of that fast lane money this fall for application. So we obviously don't have our study done, but we could still do something to put in for them. So I don't know if Bruce wants to. Yeah, well, I haven't seen the call yet. I hope there's right. nothing been put out yet as far as the call. So we'll have to, once it does go out, then we'll have to take a look at it and see what eligibility we would or would not have for uh, applying for some of this money if, in fact, it goes forward uh, in the next month or so. Okay, no other comments? Uh, we'll move on to uh, new business. Or is there any other old business? All right, we'll move on to new business. Uh, first resolution, transfer of jurisdiction of Cedar Road to the village of New Lenox from Illinois Highway um, to Laraway. Uh, District Court. <coughs> uh, comment on that, please? Yeah, this, this resolution, sure. this, this JT, and then the IGA number two are kind of joined together. Uh, we are reconstructing the intersection of Laraway and Cedar Road. We've been in uh, negotiations with the village on this. If, if the members recall, I brought this to the committee a few months ago <coughs> as far as the funding that's uh, uh, secured for this project. There's federal money and then we've got our RTA money on this. And Part of the agreement also says that <coughs> we would do additional work for the village of New Lenox in regards to this uh, roadway, lighting, landscaping, median, uh, multi-use paths, sidewalks, things of that nature. Uh, so we're including that, and they will take over jurisdiction of, of uh, Cedar, Cedar Road from Spencer Road to Lurway Road once that is completed. Now, part of the agreement also included that we will credit them the funding that they use to put the temporary signals up at Laraway and Cedar Road. That was part of the agreement. So we're crediting them <coughs> the amount of money that they spent on that towards this project. At the end of the day, uh, and the project's completed, if there's any funding uh, left from that credit, we will reimburse the village that amount but then they will take jurisdiction of that road. That mile road will be there. So I think it's a good agreement. I think it, it, it's good for the county. It's good for the village. Motion. Motion, a motion and a second. Uh, do they own uh, anything north of Illinois? Is it already in the village? They maintain from uh, Spencer Road north to uh, Francis. And then we take over jurisdiction from Francis Road all the way up to uh, 115. Okay, so <coughs> uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Next, the intergovernmental agreement with New Lennox for Laraway Road and Cedar. Motion. Second. Motion and second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Next, I'll authorize the uh, state's attorney to proceed with condemnation of Bell Road and 159th on 251st Street. Uh, any comments? No. Okay. Okay, I'll have a motion. Motion. Second. Second. Uh, one question I had. Uh, <clears throat> I noticed one of the parcels was like four acres. Uh, why is it it's such a big parcel? All the, all the others are real small. Is that for stormwater or something? Or? Well, I, it, it could be. I don't have the plans in front of me, but one of the reasons why the acreage is so large on that one parcel, I'm sure, is we are uh, shifting the road to <coughs> the east a little bit to, to avoid all the subdivision on the west side. Meadowbrook or Meadowview subdivisions on the west side. It's all open farmland on the east side, so we're shifting the road there. Consequently, uh, there'll be a larger take on that uh, 
There'll be there will be a left and a right turn lane there because that's the T intersection. All right. Okay. 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 And we just let members know we do have to shift this road to the north to get this. Is the house on the northwest corner going to be? The house on the northwest won't be. It's a, because there is a lot of acreage there, so the house won't be impacted. But there will be. There will be a lot of right of way that will have to be taken. Yeah, substantial. Because it's been a problem in the past. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Tom. Yes. Thank Bruce, you. I got a notice from IDOT about uh, the airport road, I-55. There's going to be a public hearing. You aware of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't bring that. I didn't bring it with me. I don't have the date. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have shared that with the committee. But, uh, <laughs> Illinois 126, airport road, I-55. Uh, IDOT's going to have a public hearing about that. It's not in their budget for the next several years, but it's uh, in initial planning. They finally got, I guess they finally got Plainfield, Romeoville are all on the same page as far as what they want to do or something. So, um, yeah, we're not, we're not involved in that project. It's like you said, it's a combination airport road, Route 126 interchange, either two separate interchanges or a combination of the two of them. That is uh, IDOT. Romeoville and Plainfield okay. are the parties in that. Thank you. Any other comments by the committee? Uh, Bruce, <clears throat> I wonder if you could give us an update on the uh, Cape Farm Bruce Road uh, project, um, where that might stand. <laughs> uh, just, we just had a meeting uh, Monday <coughs> with the consultant, uh, the executive's office was there, and uh, the uh, uh, chief of staff of the county board was there, and we sat down with the consultant as far as what options are available and what funding will be required for any additional studies. And the executive's office was going to reach out to the uh, village of Lock, city of Lockport to uh, talk to them about this and then move forward to meet other three entities up in that corner of the corridor to look at uh, what uh, what they would uh, uh, participate in as far as the funding for this additional work. Does Lockport want to deviate from the present plans? They want to go to 355? Well, that's what the studies have shown, whether it is or is not uh, doable. So, did the Fed sign off that we could use 355 or not? Yeah, at the meeting, at the meeting that we had up at IDOT, they said that that option is viable. Now, it doesn't mean that that would be the preferred after everything is completed. The preferred could end up being the middle, but that is a viable option as long as you don't change the logical termini, which is 159th Street and also Route 30. <coughs> along the Kate Brown, Kate Farm Bruce Court. So it is viable. So it's a matter of uh, spending, doing additional studies and spending money to do these additional studies, which would be participation by the four entities up in that corner of the court. Uh, but after everything's said and done and the study's completed, the preferred alignment could end up being the one that was uh, passed by the county board in 2008. So it's up to Homer and uh, Lockport to decide which one they want to do if they want to help uh, fund it and uh, that is correct. change the alignment. Well, they, yeah, they, they've got to, they've got to be, this, the decision has to be made whether they are going to participate in this additional study. Okay. Okay, if there's no other comment, or is there any public comment? No public comment. Uh, we don't need an executive session, do we? No. Okay. I have a motion to adjourn. So motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.